this Michelin uh, this year uh, for Tokyo and Kanto area was just published two, years, uh, two days ago. And then uh, this is a very traditional 30-year-old uh, Japanese Michelin uh, published by a Japanese editor uh, and also uh, the, uh, mm, published by a Japanese publisher much before the uh, Michelin Tokyo was introduced. So I will distribute this to you just to have a look. Don't, don't have a detailed look, you know. <laughs> okay, um, honestly speaking, I like women <laughs> in a very serious sense. I like women as uh, participants of my seminar. Why? Because you tend to nod, nod a lot when you like the idea, when you like what I said. So uh, I would like you to nod as often as possible. Okay, I will try. So these are uh, <coughs> the uh, kind of information uh, giving you the level of quality of the restaurant in Tokyo. And then uh, uh, do, I, do I give some sign to, to change the slide? Okay, the, mm, they say that, particularly the Michelin Japan said that the Tokyo is the best in terms of the number of three star and in terms of the number of restaurants having stars at all. I will give you the number. The <coughs> Tokyo uh, plus, uh, Tokyo is a uh, Tokyo, Yokohama and other Shonan areas and Tokyo 17 and Kyoto plus Osaka plus Kobe uh, 15 and Paris only 10. Okay, and also all star restaurants, one, two, three, including then the Kyoto 300, Tokyo 293 and Paris 64. So uh, with the same level of refereeing, the Tokyo, uh, well, it's much larger in terms of, say, uh, uh, the richness and uh, the pleasure the restaurants are giving to at least the reviewer of the Michelin. So, uh, the, I have a lot of friends uh, from Europe, from, uh, from the United States, and, uh, you know, they say uh, they stay a couple of days a week. Maybe you have the same experience, and I think about the restaurant, and then the, let's have dinner over there, let's have dinner in Tsukiji, let's have dinner in Lopongi. And then uh, uh, the, they always got surprised, you know, Hotaka, Hotaka. This is so different from what I thought. You know, the, this sushi is really different from, you know, what I had in Philadelphia, what I had in, say, uh, San Francisco, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, could, could you go back a little bit? The, the, this is sushi, and could you go back a little more? <laughs> a little more, <laughs> a little more. Okay, uh, the Mr. Elio Orsara, uh, he's running a restaurant called Elio Locanda Italiana. Elio Locanda Italiana. And I interviewed him the other day, and he told me that, Professor, Tokyo, is the best city in terms of dining out. And also, he made several points. That Tokyo is a city where you could enjoy not only Japanese, but also Italian, French, Spanish, Chinese, Indian, at the top level from the global standard. This is the first point. And the second point is, in Paris, in Milan, if you'd like to enjoy good food, then you will be prepared to pay a lot, say $100, $200. But say in Tokyo, only probably $8 or $6 will buy you a reasonably oishi dinner, okay? <laughs> Particularly if you're you know, uh, interested in ramen or soba, or okonomiyaki, you know? And the quality is just, uh, you know, as high as other uh, 10, 100, dollar restaurant. So this is what he said. Okay, could you, could you go ahead? 
So the <coughs> you, you already had a look at sushi, and then the kaiseki, this is in the Japanese category. So these slides are for making you hungry just before lunchtime, <laughs> okay? Next one, please. And then the fugu. Uh, the, we are now right in the season, and fugu is one of the most expensive dishes if you order courses. Probably you will be prepared to pay, say, 20,000 yen. Then uh, uh, <coughs> tempura, tonkatsu, and also, not only Japanese, the French are really rich. A lot of you know, good French restaurants. And some say uh, the Michel Troagro, the uh, restaurant owner and the chef, uh, having, say, uh, three, three stars for 40 consecutive years. No, 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 45 consecutive years. And he's now running uh, the Michel Troagro in Shinjuku and he comes to Tokyo twice, twice a year, and he say, Tokyo is really, really important to me. We, uh, you know, I couldn't think of Turaglo without the Turaglo, Michel S. Turaglo in Shinjuku. And then the Italian, a lot of Italian restaurants. Probably you will visit the Italian restaurant at least once, two months or so, right? Or you, have a brief uh, the pasta lunch uh, every week or so, okay? And then the Chinese. Chinese is li like, like Japanese. And probably ramen is a, uh, <coughs> one category of Chinese, okay? So, at the same time, these are the restaurants that tend to be rather expensive, but you could also enjoy the cheaper restaurants. Soba, ramen, yakitori, and tuna bowl, maguro don, maguro don, tuna, wonderful, 800 yen, you know. <laughs> and tuna is right from the market, you know. This morning, tuna arrived, and it's cut and sliced, and it is put on the rice, okay. And this is shokudo. You can enjoy everything, you know, curry, ramen, soba, teishoku, and other things. And this is a curry shop, and this is not Indian, this is a typical Japanese curry shop. And interestingly, they, they are really quick, super quick. Um, 30 seconds <laughs> on average. And then uh, I made a special order of seafood curry, that is a a different, you know, special, very expensive uh, menu, which costs 1,000 yen. <laughs> and then the store manager came up to me, and sir, could you give me two minutes? I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is also uh, in the same location, the Tsukiji Market, and uh, probably most of you know the name, Sushi Dai. And if you say, uh, uh, Google sushi dai, then the, the, a lot of blogs and the, you know, comments on, I waited two hours, I waited two hours and a half, you know, and all, the, <coughs> that's not all, you know, they are, they are queuing in the back. So uh, I asked the <coughs> gentleman in, at the very top of the queue uh, how long they waited, and he proudly said, two hours and a half. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, um, why so good? Now, the, why, you know, the restaurants are so good, particularly for the cheaper category, okay? One reason is excellent ingredients by committed farmers, fishers, and middlemen. I will give you a, just a brief picture of how committed they are. Okay. This is maguro tuna dishes I enjoyed late last night after finishing the preparation of this. Okay. This is directly from New York. Directly from New York, arrived in Tsukiji yesterday, or the day before yesterday, in row, and then it was cut and sliced. And 
sold it to me. Okay? And he is the person. He is unbelievably the eighth generation of the middleman company. Okay? So, so the, the Hicho uh, has got more than 200 years of history. Okay? He is really committed to his business. This is the auction. This is the auction of frozen tuna. But the auction of raw tuna is more special. Smaller and no or very few visitors are allowed. Okay? And then this is the key. You, know, you, you, you have the tail and then put out the meat and then you guess the quality of the tuna. And he bought it and cut it at, <coughs> at the front of his shop. And then this is the block from which mine came out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful, unbelievable, and also unbelievably reasonable. Normally, you are prepared to pay 10,000 yen at the department store. 300 gram, 300 gram block, but I only paid 1,800. Okay, so I strongly recommend you to go to go directly to Tsukiji. It's eight minutes walk from Ginza. Okay, and the same is true with uh, vegetables. Okay. Secondly, the chefs are committed. They visit to buy the ingredients every morning at around six o'clock. Okay, directly from the middleman. And have a look at this. This is kaiseki bento, and this is really unbelievable, isn't it? They put the whole kaiseki course in the box. They have, say, uh, 20 to 25 different dishes in a box. And all the dishes, the chef got committed and made it passionately. Okay, this is from Kyoto. And th uh, here's... Uh, a chef running one of the Rising Sun Suchuan Chinese restaurant in Yotsuya Sanchome. And he, he is nice. And also, uh, Mr. Nakamura of uh, Shofukuro uh, the, in the next building. And he is a Zen monk. And at the same time, he is a really high class teacher of uh, Senke. Ura or Omote. So, and, and he is a, uh, Nozaki-san uh, of Wake Tokuyama, and he has got a lot of knowledge of food and season in Japan. And he started talking about food and history and the name of the cuisine. You know, he couldn't stop and he continued talking for two hours. <laughs> Thirdly, the connoisseur customers, that is you, okay? Um, who will dine out at least once a month? Will dine out at least once a month? Almost everybody, right? Okay, thank you. So the, you have a lot of sophisticated eyes and hands. And you, you should be very tough on the dishes, on the services, on the atmosphere, right? And as well as prices. Then, uh, the Japanese cuisine, we had a really good news, right? Uh, two days ago, three days ago, yeah? Muke uh, Bunkai-san. But, is it for congratulations? This is the final part of my presentation. Okay. Um, the object of cultural heritage, I talked with the former Secretary General of UNESCO, Mr. Matsura, and he said, the, it is not awarded to the cuisine, it is awarded to the cultural lifestyle. So uh, the, the <laughs> in case of Japan, it should be awarded to the Japanese cultural lifestyle of eating, okay? So this is mochitsuki, uh, making rice cake. 
and this is uh, the ritual uh, <coughs> at the <coughs> everybody's home in the New Year days, <coughs> the osechi and otoso, and now the everybody buys osechi rather than make it on their own. You you are short of making it, and you are a little bit short of knowledge of why you have to make it. Okay. So, most serious problem. I'm very sorry to say that recent Japanese women, connoisseurs in eating out, but tend to be poor at cooking on your own. <laughs> Anybody very confident in cooking, like chef? Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate the gentleman raising hand. <laughs> I will come back to the point in a, in a minute. Okay? And the story of Aiko. Aiko is a, my student, uh, the 22 years old, senior student, working for a foreign bank from April, uh, from a typ typical upper class family, upper middle class family, went to U.S. high schools. And her, mama, uh, her mom is an excellent cook. She cooked for he, her big family. She cooked uh, 15 breakfasts ev every day when she was young. Okay? But Aiko is not interested in cooking. She is interested in eating, but <laughs> she's not interested in cooking. <laughs> she's, I, this is Aiko, and this is Aiko's mom. And now uh, you know, she is uh, making soup stock. Uh, from all the original ingredients, not using the uh, manufactured ingredients. Okay. And this is the result of her preparation. So this is the product of her mom, not Aiko's. And at the supermarket, as you know, the, all the you know, cuisines are ready for your purchase, and you tend to assume that these might taste better than I cook. All right. Okay. So, um, probably next slide, please. And it is men today, uh, than, uh, more than women, that tend to be interested in cooking. And Aiko's recommendation, he, he, her, well, her one of the friends, not boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and she suddenly mentioned this gentleman, okay, my friend. He's a really excellent cook. And then, uh, you know, Aiko asked him to cook at his uh, apartment, and he's cooking om rice, <laughs> the, the fried rice with uh, omelet, covered by omelet. And this is his product. And Aiko was so impressed, and uh, she said, uh, I am very sure of doing the same thing as he did. And then uh, this is a hiraki, uh, or himono, and you, you, you know the story that <laughs> the recent young wives seriously believe that this is swimming <laughs> in the sea. Yeah? So, uh, the <laughs> Really uh, short of knowledge, okay? And Aiko uh, is now going <coughs> to the cooking school, and this is her product. But she said everything was ready, and she didn't have to wash the, the bowls after that, you know? And so she couldn't reproduce that at home, <laughs> you know? And she learned almost nothing. And she just cook it, a kind of cook it, and then enjoy it after the lesson. So this school is a little bit too user-friendly, <laughs> you know, in a short sense, okay? So um, quite serious. It is not a problem only for Aiko. It is a transgenerational problem. You think of Aiko's future children. She hasn't got any experience of mom's <coughs> cooking and she, she is not exposed to the good, good cuisine until, say, 10 years, 15 years ago, when she go out and meet with 
interest in cuisine together with friends. But the taste for the eating taste tend to be formed before 10 years old. So, you know, the, probably if foreign visitors come and become a tough customers and support the quality of the Japanese restaurants, the probably we will have a little deteriorated consumers for Japanese, from Japan for these restaurants. So Japanese dietary <coughs> culture might be disappearing. So uh, the <coughs> osechi, uh, probably you will be thinking about osechi, uh, but I will <coughs> just mention that osechi ingredients has got a really interesting meaning. All the, all the dishes has got the meaning. And for example, the shrimp, always, you know, osechi couldn't be without shrimp. And shrimp is like this, you know, form. Shrimp form is like this. So shrimp means bowing this. So uh, hoping for living until you become like this. <laughs> yeah? So that, that, that's a, a hope for longevity. And in Tsukiji, they started to give these kind of techniques as well as knowledge to the amateur housewives so that they become a really smart consumers. And nice thing <coughs> about this is, you know, have a look, this, you know. Uh, the mom with a child is attending that, and he is the third generation Tsukiji middleman. And you, you might know the name Tsukiji Uogashi Sandaime in big comic. And he is the advisor to that. Probably he is the model, okay. So uh, uh, he always, you know, tell the housewives and the participants the secrets of Japanese cuisine, and particularly regarding fish. Okay, so not only learning to eat, let's learn to cook, and let's understand the culture behind the Japanese cuisine, bowing, you know, um, simultaneously. But you have to make it look fashionable and inspiring, you know, not, not just pushing and you should learn that. Okay. So, probably you will be the leader, all of you will be the leader, particularly those who raised hands to my question of professional chef technique, then uh, you, you will be leading the Japanese uh, food culture and probably avoid the Japan from getting deteriorated uh, in terms of dietary culture. Thank you very much.